Cage production is another method of fish farming that is gaining popularity and offers some advantages, especially for producers who have the ability to raise fish in existing lakes or ponds without making major structural investments. In addition, monitoring of fish health and size, as well as harvesting, can be more easily accomplished with a cage production system. Hi, my name is Mark Eikenberry. I'm with Sweetwater Springs Fish Farm. We raise hybrid striped bass here at this facility. What we have are floating cages. Uh, we rent the lake. We've got around 30 cages or so. Um, each cage will stock around 2,500 head per cage. Um, once the fish are grown full size and ready for market, the capacity for each cage will be around 3,000 pounds. Um, our growing season is going to be between May and November. Uh, during the cold weather, the fish, of course, do not eat. For cage production, as with any other fish farming system, site selection is a key consideration. Cage culture of fish can be successful in existing lakes, reservoirs, and ponds, and many of the same water requirements as farm pond production will be needed. However, for cage production, the pond or lake should also be deep enough beneath the cages to allow for good water circulation. Typically, the bottom of the fish cage should be at least two feet above the bottom of the pond. So, if the cage is six feet deep, then you should place it in an area that is at least eight feet deep. However, you should probably go to even deeper waters to account for any changes in water level from evaporation and to allow for the best possible flow of water around the cages. Basically, for cage production, you need good water. You need access to the lake, um, a basic knowledge of water chemistry and fish husbandry, and obviously a market for your fish. Our market is the Asian live market, at Chinatown, Chicago, Toronto. Uh, we take the fish in live, they are kept live until a customer purchases the fish. Cage ponds are typically larger and deeper than a pond built specifically to raise fish. Cages are often used in ponds that are not ideal for producing fish in the traditional method. These ponds may not be easily drained or harvested, or may be too large for traditional fish production, making cages the best way to raise fish. Basically, what you see is a cage, uh, a floating dock. Um, you'll notice the, the fish, uh, the, the cages out on the cable are. Um, will be accessed by the boat and they'll be fed um, and tended with the boat. A lot of folks will have a, uh, a floating dock for all of their cages. Um, we feel like using a boat's a little easier. Just like pond production, there's a critical need to manage water quality by checking dissolved oxygen levels and water temperatures on a daily basis to ensure there is a healthy environment for the fish. In cage production, the availability of dissolved oxygen can become a problem, especially in the summer in cages stocked at higher densities. In fact, oxygen stress is the most frequently encountered water quality problem in cage production. That means that cages should be supplied with aeration, so a power source will be needed. Anytime aeration is added, there needs to be a backup power system in case of an electrical outage. A cage production system will also require easy, direct, and stable vehicle access to allow for maintenance and daily attention to the water and the fish. An all-weather access road is essential because a day or more without access to the pond and the cages could threaten the survival of the fish. There are a variety of different cage designs to use. Materials that are readily available at farm supply stores can be easily adapted to fish cage construction and the cost of the materials can be relatively low. One person can actually be able to cage. Uh, the materials are plastic coated wire, PVC, um, pipe, and some glue and some time and some fasteners. This wire is actually a one inch by one inch mesh. Uh, most of our cages are made with a one half by one inch mesh. Uh, you'll want to size the mesh of the cage, obviously, to the size of your fish. The smaller the fish, the smaller the mesh that would be required. And what we use to put the cage together is a ringer. This actually uses stainless steel rings and fastens the cage together. I'm estimating the man hours that it would take to build a cage at around four to six hours. That would include everything from uh, gluing all of your pipe, cutting your piping, uh, and that would be one man. 
Uh, I think two people could, could uh, significantly uh, speed things up. Again, successful fish production in a cage system requires all of the attention to fish health necessary in any system. That includes aeration to maintain clean water and a healthy environment, as well as proper feeding on a schedule that encourages optimum growth. Once a day we'll come down and check the fish. Um, we'll feed uh, twice or three times a day. Uh, larger fish will get fed one or two times a day. The smaller fish will usually have a feeder on them and they'll feed uh, all day, every day. In addition, the cages themselves must be checked frequently to ensure they are holding up well to the elements. Life expectancy on these cages, the wiring manufacturer is uh, talking about maybe 10 years. I don't know if there's anybody actually has, that can prove that or not, if there's anybody that has actually been raising fish in cages for 10 years or not. But I know that there's some folks that have been doing it for eight years anyway and uh, they still have good cages, so possibly up to 10 years. The sides of cages may become fouled with algae, so you may need to scrape them throughout the summer. Also, in the winter, you will need to closely watch your cages to be sure that ice does not accumulate. Generally, the movement of the fish and aeration, if you provide it, will be enough to prevent ice buildup. But if the winter gets cold enough, you may need to break ice from your cages. Though each cage typically has a top, offering protection to the fish, there is still the possibility of predator or nuisance wildlife problems in a cage production system. Heron can attempt to feed on the fish, as can otters. Again, you should check with state natural resource agencies before implementing any predator control programs. Proper feeding rates and fish density or stocking rates are critical in cages. So if you want to have 1,000 pounds of fish produced in a cage, and the final market size of those fish is two pounds per fish, then you should stock 500 fish at the initial stocking. A good rule of thumb for stocking density in cages is a half a pound of fish per gallon of water for beginners. And as experience is gained, you can increase density up to a pound of fish per gallon of water, depending on the species. A good feed conversion rate will be around 1.5 or less, so a lot of feed will be entering the cage. This will impact water quality, so properly managing that feed and being sure not to overfeed is critical. As with other fish production systems, feeding rates should be matched to temperature and overall weather conditions, so you are not over or under feeding. When we bring in a two inch fish, um, they'll come in in July. By that fall, they should be up to eight to 10 inches long. Uh, and then July or August, September, the following season, then they will be ready to, to sell. If we come in with a six to eight inch fish, uh, they would actually be, uh, by that fall, they would be up to a pound, almost a pound and a quarter, almost market size, um, and then we would finish them out the spring of the following year. It is also important to store feed in a cool, dry place to avoid spoilage and prolong its shelf life. Generally, feed stored in proper conditions can last up to six months. Feed suppliers should be able to give you feeding guidelines as well as storage recommendations. Typically, floating feeds rather than sinking feeds are used in cages, so the feed doesn't fall to the bottom of the pond, out of reach of the fish. With the floating feed, the cage should be constructed in a way to make sure the feed stays in the cage long enough for the fish to eat it. For example, Mark Eikenberry installs an additional ring of netting around the top of the cages he builds to ensure the feed doesn't float out. The easiest method to harvest a cage is to partially remove it from the water so that the fish are more concentrated and then can be removed by netting. Once the cage is hoisted up, the harvesting process should proceed as quickly as possible as this can be a stressful time for the fish. Growing fish in cages is an excellent way to make use of ponds that otherwise wouldn't be ideal for growing fish. Cages do require more management skills than traditional fish ponds, but keeping your fish concentrated in cages makes it far easier to track and harvest your fish. Whatever aquaculture system you're interested in pursuing, there's a wealth of research and technical expertise that you should draw upon before you get started. Much of this information is free, and there's no reason not to learn from the real-world experience and even the mistakes others have made.